Now today I will talk about how the motivation to serve God. That each one of us, I hope more of you will serve God wholeheartedly and you receive more blessings from God. So today we'll talk about the motivations why we should all serve God. Now to serve God doesn't does not mean necessary that you will uh, be singing or dancing or preaching. It can be anything in your life that you glorify God and bless people. Then you have a pure heart to please God and glorify God. And a pure heart to bless people and help people spiritually. Then you do it from your heart wholeheartedly God will see it and he will bless your life greatly I came from a very poor family and I have retired already from formal ministry but that means I'm not paid to do anything now but God has provided for me financially that I can go to different countries in the world. Now I never want to stop serving until I die. And help the ministry of different countries. I've helped Kenya and Tanzania to build Bible schools. Amen. And also to uh, to Build a, a student worship house. And also, help Liberia to buy a piece of land to support the poor. And has helped Liberia and Kenya with buying a uh, buying motorbike for them that they will earn money to for mission work. And Pastor Washington is one person who is teaching my teachings in different places to spread these teachings from God. But I want to say is I do not have the money myself. But God provides for me. And if you have a heart to love God and serve God, He will see your heart and He will bless you greatly. It will be beyond your imagination. That you can never imagine that the human heart is not thought of the blessings of God that he has prepared for those who love him. And now today I'm going to give you five points to motivate us to serve God. And I hope you take notes and remember all these teachings. Now from Monday to Thursday I'll be giving training for ministry. For pastors and devoted Christians. It's for training people so they can do the ministry better. And so if you really want to serve God better you can come this few days okay now now here I talk about five points and I use an illustration of a house with two you know two sides of the 
and a, a two columns on the two sides of the house. Anatumia mfano wa nyumba, jinsi nyumba inavyojengwa inakuwa na sehemu mbili ya juu na ya chini. The top of the house says everything is in God's hand and no one can run away from him. Lile pala na nyumba linasema kwamba kila kitu kiko katika mikono za Mungu na hakuna yoyote anayeweza kutoroka Mungu. Now for each of these points I'll give you Bible verses later. You will be rewarded. Na kama utamtumikia Mungu basi Mungu ana thawabu yako. And on the left hand side, na mkono huu wa kushoto, if we don't love God and don't obey God, there's destruction. Kama haumtii Mungu na wewe umekataa kumtumikia Mungu basi utaingia katika uharibifu. And people can lose their salvation also. Na watu pia wanaweza kupoteza wokovu wao. And then the part of is when people don't serve God also there is destruction sehemu nyingine ni kwamba kama watu hawamtumikii Mungu wataharibiwa and they can lose salvation too na waweza kupoteza wokovu wao now we are not saved by doing good na sisi hatujawaokolea kwa sababu tumetenda matendo mema we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ tumewaokolewa kwa njia ya neema kupitia kwa imani kwa Kristo Yesu but when we have faith in God we always bear fruit lakini kama tuko na imani na Mungu kila wakati tunazalisha matunda the fruit to love God and to obey God and serve God matunda ya kumtii Mungu na kumtumikia Mungu. Amen. If a person says he believe in Jesus, kama mtu anasema kwamba anamwamini Kristo, but does not bear any fruit at all, lakini hazali ama hazalishi matunda yoyote, and is lazy in his Christian life, na yeye ni mzembe katika maisha yake ya Ukristayo. There may be something wrong in his faith. Ina maana kwamba kuna tatizo katika imani yake. And if his faith is not living faith, he can lose salvation. Kama imani yake si ile imani ambayo inatoka kwa Kristo Yesu anaweza kupoteza wokovu wake. So I hope you all remember that. Kwa hivyo naamini naomba kwamba utakumbuka mambo hayo. No one can run away from God. Kuna uwezaya kutoroka kwenye mikono za Mungu. When we love God totally, and so not him totally, tunapompenda Mungu kwa njia ya halali kabisa. There will always be rewards. Kwa kweli kutakuwa na matunda. Now I think of you know one day when I'm very very old. Anafikiria siku moja ambayo atakuwa amezeeka zaidi. That I could be dying. Kwa mfano amelalia kitabu chake cha ushukuru. Wakati atakapokuwa anataka kufa alafu watu waje wamuone I will say to them can I pray for you Anasema kwamba anataka kufa lakini mnakuja kumuona atawauliza je mngelipenda niwaombe Because I see that I have so many blessings from God already kwa sababu tayari amekwisha kuona zile baraka nyingi kutoka kwa Mungu I just want to bless so blessed to serve God all my life Atakufa akisema kwamba kwa kweli ni ya baraka kumtumikia Mungu do you want extra blessings? Je, ungelipenda baraka ziongezeke? Yeah. Yeah. your imagination. Yaani ziongezeke zaidi kushinda jinsi unavyowazia. When you love God, you receive blessings you can never imagine. Ukimpenda Mungu utapokea baraka ambazo haujawahi waza kuzihusu. Okay, now the first point, everything is in God's hand and no one can run away. Kile cha kwanza kila kitu kiko kwenye mikono za Mungu hakuna yote aweze awezaye kutoroka kwenye mikono za Mungu. You can write down Psalm 24:1. Zaburi mia, Zaburi 24 mstari wa kwanza, Zaburi 24 mstari wa kwanza. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Ya kwamba na hata dunia yote ni ya Mungu na vyote vilivyomo. Everything in the world belongs to the Lord. Vitu vyote vilivyo ndani ya Mungu, ya dunia, vyote ni mali ya Mungu. Including all the money and provision. Pesa zote na hata zile vitu zote ulivyo navyo vyote. Our health, hata afya zetu, our spiritual gifts, hata vipawa vyetu vya kiroho. Everything we have, chochote kile ambacho unacho, is in God's hand. Kiko katika mikono za Mungu. If God wants to bless you, kama Mungu anataka kukubariki, no one can stop it. Hakuna anayeweza kuzuia. One time I came to Africa. Siku moja alikuja Afrika and I missed a plane. Na yeye akakosa ndege because I miscalculated the time. Kwa sababu alipopiga hesabu ya masaa yake ya mapumziko alikosea. And I went up to the counter and asked the person. Sasa alipokuja kwenye uwanja ndege akapata akaenda kwenye dawati lile akauliza dawati la mapokezi akauliza I said I'm supposed to get on the plane that just left. Akasema yaani ile ndege ambayo imeenda ndio ilifaa mimi niwe ndani. And then she said to me, na huyu yule dada akamwambia 
Then you have to rebook your ticket. Yani you nigga is and the manner of coming away how we do kasafir. Let's see how we feel. Garama upia. And I found that it was very complicated because I booked the ticket in Hong Kong. Na sasa kapata yalipo ni mambo ambayo haya na uwezi kabisa. Manake kule yalipo pata ticket ni kuingi ni na akosehe mu nyingi ni. And I prayed to God and said, Lord. Everything is in your hand. Akaomba akamwambia Mungu, Mungu kila kitu kiko kwenye mikono zako. Please help me in this difficult situation. Hebu Mungu kanisaidie katika kipindi hiki kigumu. And I asked the woman, please make a phone call to find out anything I can do. Akamwambia yule dada naomba ukapige simu uulize naweza kufanya namna gani. She said, I already found out nothing you can do. Aka yule dada akamwambia hakuna chochote ambacho unaweza kufanya maana ile ndege ishaenda. And I prayed to God and I said to her, please make a phone call. Tena akaomba Mungu alafu akamwambia yule binti hebu jaribu kupiga simu mara ya pili. And when she made a phone call her eyes and mouth were wide open. Na sasa alipopiga simu mara ya pili macho yake na mdomo wake zikabaki wazi. And then she said the plane has come back. Akamwambia ile ndege haijaenda imerejea. And then later when I saw the people in the plane I asked them. Sasa alipokutana na wale watu waliokuwa kwenye ndege akawauliza. What has happened to the plane? Ni nini ambacho kimefanyika na ile ndege? A person said, "Well, the plane just could not take off and then came back." Mtu mmoja akamwambia, "Ati ile ndege ilikataa kuruka juu, ndio maana imerudi." Amen. The plane just could not take off without me. Yaani ile ndege haingeruka iende kama yeye hajaingia ndani. I've seen miracles like this all through my life. When you maisha yake ameona miujiza mingi sample hiyo. When you really love God and serve God wholeheartedly, unapompenda Mungu na kumtumikia Mungu kwa moyo wako wote. And have no ulterior motives. Na hauna yale mawazo mengine kinyume. Then you have a pure heart to glorify God and bless people. Una na una moyo msafi wa kumtukuza Mungu na kuwabariki watu. And don't worry about your problems. Na sasa usishughulikie kuhusu matatizo yako, yasikutatize matatizo. And just say for the whole day time I'm going to praise God and love God and obey him. Licha ya kuwa katika matatizo, wewe chukua muda wako mwingi ukimuomba Mungu na kumsifu Mungu. He will bless you for sure. Mungu atakubariki kwa kweli. Because everything is in God's hand. Kwa sababu kila kitu kiko kwenye mikono za Mungu. Let me tell you, throughout the day Wasa niwaambie yeye siku yote nzima. When I'm doing other things, anapofanya vitu vingine, I'll be loving God at the same time. Yeye wakati huo ataendelea kumpenda Mungu. I love God from my heart. Anapenda Mungu kutoka kwenye moyo wake. And his joy and his power flow through me. Na sasa upendo wake na furaha ya Mungu inabubujika ndani mwake. Yesterday a group of people came jana kulikuwa na kikundi cha watu waliokuja na we pray together na tukaomba pamoja a number of them were touched by the holy spirit aha wengi wao waliguzwa na mguzo wa roho mtakatifu when we love god god will give us anointing and blessings tunapompenda mungu atatupa upako na baraka but please don't have in mind i want to be great lakini usikuwe na hili wazo katika mawazo yako ya kwamba unataka uonekane kwamba wewe ndio mkubwa zaidi When God wants you to be great he will do it. Kama Mungu anataka kwamba uwe mkubwa, atakuinua na utakuwa mkubwa wakati wako. But in your mind, don't think about how much money I will get. Lakini katika mawazo yako, usiwe na mawazo ya kuwaza kwamba leo natengeneza fedha kiasi gani. Or think about how great an evangelist you will become. Ama uanze kuwaza kwamba utakuwa mwinjilisti mkubwa dunia nzima. God will do it at the right time. Yaani Mungu ataweza kufanya mambo hayo wakati wake unapofika. Okay and that revelation 2:23 ufunuo sura ya pili mstari wa 23 ufunuo sura ya pili mstari wa 23 the second part sehemu ya pili i am he who searches hearts and minds and i will repay each of you according to your deed mimi ndiye naechunguza mawazo na mioyo za wanadamu na hivi hivyo hivyo mimi ndimi nitakayelipa matendo yao mema walioyatenda He will search our hearts and our minds. Anachunguza mioyo zetu na mawazo yetu. And when he sees that you have a pure heart to love God, anapoona kwamba una moyo msafi wa kumpendeza Mungu, he will repay you according to your goodness. Yeye basi atakupa thawabu kulingana na vile ulivyotenda. But if you have bad motives, lakini kama una mawazo kinyume, or you always think about your problems, ya kwamba kila siku unafikiria kuhusu matatizo yako, and you worry and you are not happy, na sasa umekaa maisha ya kusononeka kwamba hauna furaha. 
that you get frustrated with people instead of blessing people God will see that too Mungu ataona hayo pia. So don't think that we can run away from God. Kwa hivyo usisikilie kwamba waweza kukimbia kutoka kwenye mikono za Mungu. I want to say this. Nataka kusema hili. Many people think they are smarter than God. Watu wengi wanafikiria kwamba wao wana maarifa mengi kushinda Mungu. What do I mean? Inamaanisha nini? When you see a beautiful girl, they say I'll chase after this girl even though this is not a Christian. Aha kama ni mwanaume anapoona binti mzuri anasema kwamba nitamfuata ijapokuwa hata huyo binti si mkristo lakini nitamfuata tu mimi. A woman sees a handsome man a rich man you say she will say I will chase after this man even though he is not a Christian. Aha naye binti anapomuona anapomuona mwanaume ambaye ana fedha nyingi anapendeza anasema kwamba nitamfuata ijapokuwa yeye si mkristo. They think that their plan is better than God's plan watu wanafikiria kwamba mipango zao ndizo mizuri sana kushinda mipango za Mungu. Can your plan be better than God's plan? Je, mpango wako unaweza kuwa mzuri kushinda mpango wa Mungu? No. We can never outsmart God. We hatuwezi tukawa na mipango miema kushinda ya Mungu. Because as high as heaven is above the earth, all kinds of miracles Amesikia kwamba huko Afrika kuna wale waingilisti wakubwa ambao wanafanya mikutano mikubwa ya miujiza zaidi and they want people to pay for the miracles na wanataka wewe kabla mtumishi hajakuona lazima ulipe gharama and sometimes people use witchcraft na hata wakati mwingine wao watumishi wanatumia uchawi they will say with witchcraft or with my way i will get more money now wanasema kwamba nitatumia hizi njia zangu za uchawi na nitapokea fedha nyingi zaidi Let me ask you can these people outsmart God? Je, ni waulize hawa watu ambao ni waingilisti bandia hawa wanaweza kuwa na mipango mizuri kushinda ya Mungu? But there are so many people they want to try their own way. Lakini kuna watu wengi ambao wanataka kutumia njia zao wao wenyewe. So I hope you remember this. Kwa hivyo naamini utakumbuka haya. Even when you see a handsome man, a rich man or a beautiful girl Don't think that you can outsmart God. Hata kama unaona watu wanaopendeza, watu wanaovutia, usifikiri kwamba mipango yako ni miema kushinda ya Mungu. To follow God's way is the best way. Kufuata njia za Mungu ndilo jambo la halali kabisa. Okay, and then on the right hand side the column on the right hand side. Aha, upande huu wa mkono wa kulia sasa. Those who love God and obey God will be blessed. Wale wanao mtii Mungu na kumtumikia watabarikiwa. One Bible verse we all know is Matthew 6:33. Mathayo sura ya sita mstari wa 33. Mathayo sura ya sita mstari wa 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Utafute kwanza ufalme wa Mungu na haki yake na mambo mengine yote yataongezewa. Now what does it mean to seek God's kingdom? Ila maanisha nini kutafuta ufalme wa Mungu? First we want more people to enter the kingdom of God. We want more people believe in Jesus. Ya kwanza tunataka watu wa maombezi. And then next point is wherever God is the king where people obey him there is his kingdom. Aha, popote ambapo watu wanatii Mungu hapo ina maana kwamba Mungu ndiye mfalme. Huo ndiyo ufalme wa Mungu. So when you obey God totally your heart is the kingdom of God. Unapomtii Mungu sawa sawa basi moyo wako unaongozwa na Mungu anakuwa mfalme. Let me ask you do you, every Christian always obey God at home and everywhere they go je ni waulize wakristo wote mahali ambapo wanakaa penye wanatembea wanamtii Mungu do you yell and fight with your husband or wife at home je mume na mke nyumbani huwa mnapigana ndio una unatusi mwingine mama anatusi baba baba anatusi mama mateke na mango do you get frustrated with people at home and where you go na je kule nyumbani na hata penye unafanya kazi kuna watu wanaokukasirisha now when we want God to be the king then we let God rule our family and everywhere we go basi kama tungelipenda kwamba Mungu awe mfalme wetu lazima tumwachilie awe kiongozi katika familia zetu na hata ndoa zetu we want to live in a love of God the peace of God the blessings of God. Ya kwamba tuishi katika upendo wa Mungu, katika baraka za Mungu, katika mahusiano yote ya Mungu. So wherever we go we want to be peaceful to people with people. Popote tunapoenda lazima tuwe na imani na amani na watu. And bless people. Na tuwabariki watu. And the hardest person to bless is your husband or wife. Na mtu 
mtu mgumu wa kubariki ni mmeo au mkeo because you have been with them for too long kwa sababu mmezoeana mmeishi pamoja kwa muda you have found too many shortcomings in their lives ya kwamba wewe ushaejua udhaifu wake katika maisha and you are used to yelling at them na sasa wewe umezoea kumpigia kile na kumtusi so when we seek God's kingdom then we say when you go home you say i want to be nice to my family unapotafuta ufalme wa Mungu kwanza inamaanisha unaporudi kule nyumbani utamwambia mmeo nataka niwe mtu wa kupendeza wewe and then when we love them then we are letting God be the king in our life tunapopendana mume na mke tunawa ina maana kwamba Mungu ndiye anayeongoza ndoa yetu so wherever we go we let God be the king kwa hivyo popote unapoenda ukamwache Mungu awe mfalme and God will bless your life na Mungu atabariki maisha yako Haleluya. Amen. And then there are a number of other verses. Aha, kuna mistari mingine pia. One is Psalm 34 verse 8. Zaburi sura ya 34 mstari wa 8. Zaburi 34 mstari wa 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is a man who trusts in him. Oh, njeni muone vile Mungu alivyo mwema ana baraka yule anayemtumainia Bwana. So he says that taste that the lord is good onja uone kwamba mungu ni mwema whoever trusts in the lord will be blessed yoyote atakaye muamini bwana atabarikiwa so we say here when we trust in god and follow him we will be blessed yani unapomtumainia mungu na kumwamini kumfuata utabarikiwa now we won't go through this verses in detail hatuwezi basi tukapitia vifungu hivi vyote kiundani and then Psalm 34 verse 10 Zaburi 34 mstari wa 10 Zaburi 34 mstari wa 10 Then you can study these Bible verses more at home. Ya kwamba unapoenda nyumbani mstari hizi utajifundisha mwenyewe. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the uh, the Lord lacks no good things. Aha. Simba anaweza kuwa na njaa alafu awe mdhaifu lakini yule anayemtafuta Bwana hatakoswa chochote. The lions may be hungry sometimes. Wakati mwingine simba aweza kuwa na njaa. But when we see the Lord will lack no good things. Lakini tunapomtafuta Bwana hatakoswa chochote chema. So for those who always seek the Lord, kwa hivyo wale wote ambao wanamtafuta Bwana, they will lack no good thing. Hawatakoswa chochote chema. They will have all the good things. Wao watakuwa na vitu vyote vizuri. And that's Psalm 84:11. Psalm 84:11 mstari wa Zaburi mstari wa The Lord will give grace and glory no good thing will be withheld from those who work who walk uprightly Yaani Mungu atakupa neema na utukufu kwa wale wanaotembea katika mahusia ya Bwana hakuna chochote ambacho watazuiliwa kupata So God will give grace and glory ya kwamba Mungu atapia neema na utukufu And those people who walk uprightly they will lack no good things. Na wale wanaotembea katika njia za unyofu za Bwana hawatakoswa lolote. So the Bible is very clear. Kwa hiyo Biblia ni ya wazi zaidi. When we love God and trust God and obey Him. Tunapompenda Mungu na kumtii na kumfanyia. Blessings will come to us. Baraka zitatujia sisi. And Joseph is one good example in the Old Testament. Na Yusuf ni yule ni mfano katika agano la kale. He was sold by his brothers. Yeye aliuzwa na ndugu zake. But in Genesis 39 verse 2 katika kitabu cha mwanzo 39 mstari wa pili when Joseph was sold to Egypt he continued to have a close relationship with God Yusufu alipouzwa katika nchi ya Misri aliendelea kuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu and the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered na Mungu alikuwa pamoja na Yusufu na akaendelea kupanuka zaidi so the Lord was with him because he trusted in him all the time he have a close relationship and then he prospered in everything he did basi japokuwa aliuzwa yeye aliendelea kutengeneza uhusiano wake na Mungu na Mungu akawa karibu naye akamfanya akaendelea kupanuka na kanawili zaidi so he was persecuted by his brothers ijapokuwa alidhihakiwa na ndugu zake he could complain to god yeye alikuwa tu anamlilia Mungu 
He could say, God, why did you do this to me? Aha, ye hakusema kwamba Mungu mbona ulifanya haya kwangu? Why didn't you stop my brothers? Mbona haukuwazuia wale kaka zangu kuniuza? But God has a more wonderful plan. Lakini kumbe Mungu alikuwa na mpango mzuri zaidi. He was later raised up to be the prime minister of Egypt. Sasa yeye japo kuwa aliuzwa, aliinuliwa akawa waziri mkuu katika ile nchi ya Misri. And fulfill the plan of God in Israel. Na sasa kutimiza mipango za Mungu katika taifa la Israel. Now sometimes this process will go through difficult times. Aha, wakati huo kuangaliwa unaweza chukua muda mrefu. He was betrayed by his mistress, uh, the wife of his master. Yeye pia alidhihakiwa na yule mke wa yule mkuu wake katika ile nje ya Misri. He was put in prison. Hata akawekwa gerezani. And then he helped an official of the government na sasa alipomsaidia mmoja wa wale wakuu wa serikali. But the official forgot about him. Na hata yule mkuu wa serikali alimsahau. But God did not forget him. Lakini Mungu hakumsahau. And God repaid him back. Lakini Mungu alimlipa zaidi. And use his life greatly. Na akatumia maisha yake kwa viwango vikuu zaidi. But some of you might say no no that won't come to me. Watu wengine utasema kwamba mimi sitaki hayo mateso yapitie kwangu. I hope you believe that God is almighty. Na tumaini kwamba utaamini ya kwamba Mungu ni mkuu zaidi. No one can run away from him. Hakuna awezaye kutoroka Mungu. And he will see your hearts. Mungu ataona moyo wako. Now many people serve God, watu wengi wanamtumikia Mungu. But they always have the heart, lakini wako na ule moyo to show off. Ule moyo wa kurudi nyuma. When it tells kama ni wakati wa kucheza they want to show that they are the best wanataka wachezi waonekane kwamba wao ndio wanajua kucheza zaidi and when they are dancing na wanapocheza they are all thinking of people who will look at me and say i'm the best dancer aha wanacheza wakiwa na wazo kwamba wale wanaoniona watu na mimi kama ndo najua kucheza kushinda wengine wote when they sing they think of how people will say wow his voice Her voice is so great. Yaani hata kama ni kuimba, anajaribu kutoa ile sauti nyororo ili kila mtu aseme kwa kweli wewe ni muimbaji. So when people look at things in the world, kwa hivyo watu mnapoangalia mambo yaliyoko duniani, they miss the Lord. Inamaanisha utakosa mpango wa Mungu. Let me ask you, do you want the blessings from God or do you want the praise of people? Je, nikuulize, ungelipenda kupata baraka kutoka kwa Mungu ama ungelipenda sifa kutoka kwa wanadamu? Okay, very good. So if all day long you follow God, kwa hivyo siku nzima unapomfuata Mungu. When you're cooking, hata kama unapika unapika with all your heart. Hebu ukapiki na unampenda Mungu. When you're walking on the street, hata kama unatembea kule njiani. Love God all the time. Mpende Mungu kila wakati. And believe that when we love him, na uamini kwamba unapompenda Mungu, he is very happy. Yeye ana furaha. And he remember how you love him. Na atakumbuka jinsi unavyompenda. And he will prepare for you something that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Atakuangalia vitu ambavyo macho hayajawahi ona, mawazo yako hayajawahi fikiria. And the human hearts are not thought of. Na kwa hivyo basi wewe hata kuachilia uanguke. And that's first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. Wa Korinto wa kwanza sura ya pili mstari wa tisa. Wa Korinto wa kwanza sura ya pili mstari wa tisa. So you all remember that when we love God and trust in him and and obey him he will bless us in everything utakumbuka kwamba unapompenda Mungu na kumfuata na kumtii atakubariki katika njia zote and at the third point aha kipengele cha tatu everyone who serve God will be rewarded yote yule anayemtumikia Mungu atapewa thawabu now many people think well i don't serve God well enough aha watu wengi ufikiria kwamba ah mimi hata sijamtumikia Mungu vya kutosha they might say i don't have enough talents wanaweza Unaweza kusema kwamba hawana talanga zile za kutosha. They might say I haven't brought anyone to Jesus yet. Waweza kusema hata mmoja sijamleta kwa Kristo Yesu. So many people look at how great they are or not, you know, or that they are not so great. Aha, watu wanajiangalia jinsi kwamba wao sio wakubwa hiyo haisaidii. But when Jesus talks he said don't look at that Look at whether you have the heart to bless people. Let's go to God. Yes, anaponena, anaenda na kusema kwamba usijiangalie, lakini angalia je, uko na moyo safi au miwili yote inazungumza kitu kimoja? If you give a cup of cold water in the name of disciple, you will by no means lose your reward. Kama utampa mtu kikombe cha maji baridi kwa kwa ile imani ya mitume hautapoteza thawabu yako. So 
even if you cannot do great things. Hata kama hauwezi ukafanya mambo makubwa. But if you can give one cup of cold water, lakini kama unaweza kupeana tu kikombe kimoja cha maji baridi, to a little ones of Jesus, kwa wale wadogo wa Kristo Yesu, when you can encourage a little person, ya kwa mfano unaweza kumuhimiza mtu yeyote yule. When you can encourage them, unaweza kuwahimiza. You can tell them about Jesus. Unaweza kuambia kuhusu Kristo for them ama kuwaombea or help them in any way kuwasaidia kwa njia ile nyingine no matter how little it is haijalishi ni kidogo kipi even if you give a cup of cold water hata kama unapeana kikombe cha maji baridi jesus will say you will not lose your reward yesu anasema hautapoteza thawabu yako now god is totally different from people kwa hivyo mungu ni tofauti sana na wanadamu when you do something god or something good unapofanya kitu kizuri people will say well you haven't done the other things so well aha watu hawataangalia kile kizuri ambacho umekitenda wataangalia yale mabaya ambayo umeyatenda and when you do something good they will still say you need to a lot to improve you need to as a kama umejaribu kadri ya uwezo wako watakuja waseme hata hapa haujafaulu hebu weka bidii zaidi so it's hard for people to appreciate people to praise ni vigumu sana mtu kuja kusema kwamba kwa kweli hapa umefanya la kupendeza but god is not like that lakini mungu haangalii hivyo he looks at whatever you do for him and as much as you take the kingdom of God and he will remember mungu atakumbuka and he will appreciate you na mungu yeye atakusifu and he will reward you in his life and in the next life na mungu atakupa baraka kwenye maisha ya saa hii na hata maisha yanayokuja that means in heaven yani hayo maisha ya mbinguni so with god if you just do little things for him kwa mungu unapofanya vitu vidogo kwake he will remember yeye anakumbuka so that gives us motivation to serve him hiyo basi inatuchochea kumtumikia mungu of course when we do little things we want to do greater things manake unapofanya vitu vidogo pia unamsukuma kufanya vitu vikubwa but start with little things usigwamie pale kwa vitu vidogo even when you are doing great things hata kama unafanya vitu vikubwa sometimes we do little things to people wakati mwingine inaweza kuwa ni vitu kidogo sana kwa watu. In different countries I go to I do training in ministry. Yeye yeah, anapoenda katika mataifa tofauti anafanya mafundisho tofauti pia. But sometimes I also visit some people who are in need. Na hata wakati mwingine anawatembelea wale watu ambao wana matatizo, wana um, wana shida mbalimbali. And I pray for a lot of people. Na anawaombea watu wengi. And I counsel the people. Na pia anawafanyia ushauri. And afterwards sometimes I help people spiritually. Na wakati mwingine pia anawasaidia watu kuwa kiroho. So we do the things in ministry in meetings. Kwa hivyo tunafanya vitu katika huduma na katika mikutano. But I also do ministry one to one. Lakini pia anafanya huduma kwa uso kwa uso kuongea na mtu mmoja kwa mwingine. I will never despise any single person. Yaani yeye hataweza kumdharau mtu yule yote. And when you have this heart, na kama una moyo huu, God will remember and bless you. Mungu atakumbuka na atakubariki. So when you come to church, kwa hivyo unapokuja kanisani, don't just sit and listen. Usije tu na ukae na kazi yake iwe tu kusikiliza. Get to know the people here. Jaribu kujua watu hawa ni akina nani. And get to know their lives. Na uweze kujua hata maisha yao yako. And pray for them. Na uwaombe. And visit them. Na uwatembelee pia. Help them where they need you. Kama wanakuhitaji, wanahitaji msaada wako jamani, wasaidie. Strengthen their spiritual life. Hebu ukatimize, ukawahimize maisha yao ya kiroho. Especially when they are newcomers. Asua sana kama ni wageni ambao wamekuja miongoni mwetu. You will help them spiritually. Wasaidie kiroho. And when you see we Christians here, na unapo vyombo vya kanisa ama umeomba wewe you have a heart to serve God. Kama una uko na moyo wa kumtumikia Mungu, God will remember and bless you. Mungu atakumbuka na atakubariki. Hallelujah. And then in Matthew 25 verse 23 Madayo sura ya 25 mstari wa 23 Madayo sura ya 25 mstari wa 23 Now Matthew 25 there are three parables of the last days. Basi hapa kuna parable pasta parable. Kuna mifano mi you say three parables about the end time. Kuna mifano mitatu kuhusu nyakati za mwisho. That all these are about when Jesus comes back. Ya kwamba mambo haya yatafanyika wakati Kristo Yesu atakuja. The second parable is about three servants, one with five talents, one with two and one with one talent. Ya pili ni ile ambayo kuna yule aliyekuwa na talanda tatu, mwingine talanda hivyo zikiendelea. 
Um, now the one with the five and two talents, they have served God and then they were, you know, they earned the money back. Aha, wale wali, yule alie kuwa talanda mbili na mungi talanda tano, walifanya kazi yao na pia wakarejesha fedha zao. But the one with the one talent buried the talents. Lakini yule alie pewa moja, alizika chini. And then the master said to him. Na sasa yule mkua lipokuja kamuambia. And then he said this. Now, to the... Now to the good servant, to the good servant. Akasema haya kwa wale waliokuwa watumishi wema. He said good and faithful servant. Akasema nyinyi watumishi wazuri waminifu. You have been faithful with a few things. Mumekuwa waminifu kwa vile vichache. I will put you in charge of many things. Sasa nitakuweka mwe waangalizi wa vitu vingi. Come and share your master's happiness. Hebu njoo tukasherekee pamoja na furaha hii ya mkuu wenu. So the servant who earned the money, he was a good and faithful servant. Kwa hivyo yule mtumishi aliyepata pesa alikuwa mwaminifu good means his life quality is good yani kuwa mzuri na maanisha kwamba maisha yake hata ya kawaida ilikuwa mema that he has love and joy and peace ya kwamba alikuwa na upendo na furaha na amani and he is faithful na alikuwa mwaminifu because he is faithful to serve god kwa sababu alikuwa mwaminifu kumtumikia mungu and then in the and then in luke chapter 6 verse verse 38 Luka sura ya sita mstari wa 38 Luka sura ya sita mstari wa 38 Give and will be given to you a good measure pressed down shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use it will be measured to you Peana nawe utapewa kipimo kile ambacho kilichojaa kikasukwa sukwa kikamwagika jinsi zile kipimo kile unachopimia ndicho kile ambacho pia nawe utapimiwa na one way we can serve God is to give to people who are needy njia moja ya kumtumikia Mungu ni kupeana kwa wale ambao wana mahitaji I don't mean give to people who gamble and take your money and go and gamble. Sisemi kwamba unapeana kwa wale watu ambao unachukua fedha zako wanaenda kucheza nazo kamari. But I mean is people who are really in need. Lakini inamaanisha kwamba ni wale tayari kwa kweli wana mahitaji. And also when you give to the church. Na pia unapopeana kwa kanisa. And the Lord will bless you greatly. Mungu atakubariki zaidi. With blessings running over. Na baraka zitajaa mpaka zianze kumwagika. And I, when I've been faithful in giving, God provided for me so I can go to different countries. This is far more than what I gave. But we don't give in order to get some money from God. God will remember your needs. Mungu atakumbuka mahitaji. He will help you accordingly. Atakusaidia inavyohitaji. Okay, and then on the left side. On the left side, the sehemu ya mkono wa kushoto. So those who don't have a good relationship with God and don't obey him, they will have destruction. Wale ambao hawana uhusiano mzuri na Mungu na hawamfuati Mungu basi wata wataingia katika uharibifu. Galatians 6:8 Wa Galatia sura ya 6 mstari wa 8 Wa Galatia sura ya 6 mstari wa 8 Whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction Yote anayepanda kwa kujifurahisha mwili wake basi atavuna uharibifu I've heard there are people who call themselves Christians but they chase after different girls and have relationship with different girls Kuna watu ambao wanajiita wa Kristo lakini kazi yao ni kufuatana mambo ambayo hayahusiani na Ukristo And what will happen is they will reap destruction in the whole life Ila maanisha kwamba kile unachokifanya unapanda wakati wa kuvuna pia utavuna kile ulichokipanda Because God has a love like doesn't like that nzuri We don't have to do that Tusifanye hivyo And when we have anger, na kama tuna hasira, it can ruin our life. Hasira yaweza kuharibu maisha yako yote. And many people are angry with their spouse. Na hata mtu mwingine ana ana kwa mfano kama ni mume anamkasirikia mumewe na kama ni mke anamkasiria mumewe. This will also bring destruction. Mambo haya yote pia yataleta uharibifu. And then in John 5:14, katika Yohana sura ya 5 mstari wa 14, Yohana sura ya 5 mstari wa 14, there was a man who was healed by Jesus of 38 years of sickness. Kuna mwanamume aliyepoyo na Kristo Yesu na huyo jamaa alikuwa mgonjwa kwa miaka 38. And when Jesus saw him, he said to him. Aha, Yesu alipomuona akamwambia, 
Sin no more, lest the worst thing will happen to you. Usitende dhambi tena, manake kama uti tena dhambi, mako makubwa mabaya ya takutendekea. So if this person continues sin, kama huyo mtu angeyendelea kufanya dhambi, his sickness can come back. Ugonja wake ugeretea. And demons can attack him. Na hata mapepo wange mfuata. He can lose everything he has. Angelipotiza kile ambacho ni kwa nacho. I have known pastors, amesha wajua wachungaji wengi, who committed adultery ambao wanafanya adultery wanafanya uzinzi and they lost the ministry na wanapoteza uduma zao kabisa and their life become problematic na maisha yao yanakuwa maisha ya matatizo tu so when we sin the worst thing will happen to us kwa hivyo unapotana dhambi kuna mambo mabaya ambayo yatakutendekea but some people say I can ask Jesus to forgive me. Now when we sincerely repent, God will forgive us. But there will always be a destruction caused by the sin. Lakini kila wakati kutakuwa na uharibifu ambao unatengwa na dhambi. When David committed adultery and murder, wakati Daudi alipofanya uzinzi na mpaka kaua, when he repented God forgave him. Alipoomba msamaha Mungu alimsamehe. But he had to suffer for the whole lifetime. Lakini maisha yake mbele yalikuwa maisha ya matatizo. And sores follow him in his life. Na sasa utapata kwa matatizo yalimfuata katika maisha yake. So when people sin they will have terrible consequence. Kwa hivyo unapotenda dhambi kuna mshahara wa hizo dhambi utaonekana. So every time when we are about to sin, kila wakati ambapo uko karibu kuingia katika dhambi, remember that the sin can bring destruction. Kumbuka kwamba dhambi zinaleta uharibifu. Now look at me. Hebu mtazameni. I think that, that God is using me now. Anashukuru Mungu ya kwamba Mungu anamtumikia sasa hivi. And I think training pastors and devoted Christians in many countries amekuwa basi akiwafundisha wachungaji na wakristo wengine kwenye mataifa tofauti i thank god for that anashukuru mungu kwa hilo but imagine if i commit some serious sin je kama angelitenda dhambi ambayo inasikika ni dhambi ya wazi zaidi it can destroy my whole ministry basi hiyo dhambi itaharibu huduma yake wote and i could die in misery na sasa atakufa kifo ambacho ni cha ajabu zaidi. So I don't want anything like that to happen to me. Kwa hivyo yeye hataki vitu kama hivyo vikamtendekee. So in your home, kwa hivyo hata nyumbani kwenu, if you get angry with your spouse, unapomkasirisha yule mpenzi wako, it's destroying your life. Yaani hiyo asira itaharibu maisha yenu. Or when you mistreat people here, you're destroying your life. Ama kwamba wewe sio mtu mwema kwa watu wengine, itaharibu maisha yako zaidi. So hope you search your heart and say in which areas i have sinned kwa hivyo utajichunguza na uone kwamba ni sehemu gani ambayo ninakosea please help me to start by saying when i'm about to sin na umwambie mungu naomba ukanisaidie nisiingie katika dhambi ninapojaribiwa kuingia katika dhambi now in these few days i will talk about how to overcome sins and frustration negative feelings and our thinking kwenye kivipindi hivi kwenye semina yetu nitafundisha jinsi ya kushinda dhambi na pia jinsi ya kufanya kwamba usikasirishwe na watu wengine wanaoumia kuso maneno kinyume kuso. And then the last point, na sehemu ya mwisho, when people don't serve God, they don't bear fruit, they can face destruction. Kama watu hawamtumikii Mungu hawatazalisha matunda basi, wata, wata, watavuna uharibifu. I talk about the Matthew 25 the parables of the, of the last time. Amezungumza kwenye atasungumza amezungumza kwenye madhai 25 kuhusu zile mifano za watu watatu. And a servant who buried the one talent, yule yule um, yule mtumishi aliyefukia talanta yake kwenye ardhi. In Matthew 25:36. Kwenye madhai 25:36. 25:26. Kwenye madhai 25 mstari wa 26. And the master said you wicked lazy servant. Aha yule mtumi yule mkubwa wako akamwambia kwamba wewe ni mtumishi mzembe na wewe sio mzuri kabisa. And the servant was thrown outside into the darkness gnashing his teeth. Na sasa yule mtumishi alitupwa nje mahali kulikuwa na giza kubwa mahali pa kusaga meno. So this servant could have served God but he did not and he buried his talents. Huyu mtumishi ilifaa mtumikie Mungu lakini hakumtumikia Mungu yeye alifukia ardhini talanta yake. And he it was thrown into the outer darkness. Na alitupwa nje mahali kulikuwepo na giza kubwa zaidi. Is that heaven the outer darkness is it heaven? 
Je, ile sehemu aliyotupa kwenye giza kubwa na kusaka meno, je, ni mbinguni kwa Mungu? Hapana. No, it's hell. Huko ni jehanamu. We're not saved by doing good. Hatuokolewa kutenda mema. We're not saved by Lakini tunapomwamini Yesu, devil will bear fruit. Wewe utazalisha matunda. The faith in God will bear fruit. Imani katika Mungu itazalisha matunda. We want to serve God. Na tunataka tumtumikie Mungu. For 46. Mstari wa 45 mstari wa 46. Tungali kwenye Mathayo 25, kwenye mstari wa 45 46. And then he said that Whatever you did not do for one of these little ones of me, you did not do to me. Kile ambacho hauja wafanyia hawa wadogo kwa ajina langu ina maana kwamba hauja nitendea mimi and they will go into eternal punishment. Wewe utaingia katika jehana mkubwa. So the servant who did not do the good things to the little ones, they are thrown into eternal punishment. Kwa wale watumishi ambao hawatendi mambo mema kwa Kristo, wao watatupa mahali kuna adhabu ya milele. When a Christian doesn't do anything at all to bless people, kama Mkristo hawezi kufanya lolote kuwabariki watu wengine, there is something wrong in his Christian life. Inamaanisha maisha yake ya Ukristo yana matatizo. And he could lose his salvation. Na hata ule wokovu alonao anaweza kupoteza. And he also lose the reward of Jesus. Na pia atapoteza zile thawabu ambazo Mungu angempa. So, this five points can you remember? Je, unaweza kumbuka hizi vipengele vitano ambavyo amezizungumza? I hope you remember for your whole lifetime. Ninaamini kwamba utazikumbuka kwenye maisha yako yote. Everything is in God in God's hand and no one can run away from it. Ya kwanza ni kwamba kila kitu kiko kwenye mikono za Mungu hakuna awezaye kutoroka Mungu. When we love God and obey him we'll be blessed. Ya pili unapomtii Mungu na kumpenda Mungu atakubariki. When we serve God we'll be rewarded. Unapomtumikia Mungu atakulipa. And then when we don't serve God, when we don't love God and don't obey God, there will be destruction. Kama hatumpendi mungu hatumutumiki basi tainia katika uwaribifu. And then when we don't serve God, also there can be destruction. Na pia kama hatumutumiki ya mungu tainia katika uwaribifu. So which way do you want to go? Je, ni njia ipi ungelipenda kuenda? Which way do you want to go? Ungelitagua kuenda kwenye njia ipi? Do you want to bless people and serve God? Je, ungelipenda kuenda kwenye njia kumutumiki ya mungu na kuwabariki watu? And I hope you remember this. And I mean, it's not hard to please God. Last night we talked about this. It is easy. When we fail in any way, ask God to forgive us. And then when we do anything for God, we can encourage ourselves and say, God is happy when I'm serving Him. God remembers it. And He will bless me. Hallelujah. 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 So I hope you all have this faith in your whole lifetime. Last night I talked about interactive prayer and interactive action. Jana alizungumza kuhusu maombi ya mahusiano. So whenever we the maombi yangu. God is happy with me. Mungu ana furaha na mimi. And whenever I serve God, na ninapomtumikia Mungu, God is happy with me. Mungu ana furaha na mimi. And he bless me and reward me. Atanibariki zaidi. So all day long, kwa hivyo siku yote siku zote, you do this. Sio unaweza fanya hivyo? Now can you stand up with me? Hebu kila mmoja tukasimame sasa. All day long, usiinue mkono wako tu haraka. Hii inamaanisha Anaposema kumtumikia Mungu kwa masaa yote, yani kazi yako yote itakuwa ya kabisa. What it is as a minister. Yani uinuliwe utumikie Mungu kama muhudumu, kama mchungaji. Okay, those who want to be a minister one day serving God full time, can you raise your hand? Kama ungelipenda kuwa mchungaji, mnajua kazi ya mchungaji ni ngumu. Kama ungelipenda kuwa mchungaji, inua mkono wako jotoku.